Sure, we're at uh, Big Mountain, the, the end of Shimokan Street. Uh, small village was out here at one time and there was a, a coal breaker or a coal mine. It's headed here, you can see the foundation of it still, but uh, we had a shaft that went down and this uh, now is, you know, the whole thi thing's been shut down. So the water is coming in and it's filling up the, uh, the mine shaft and then it, it comes out of the ground right here. Even when the flow is low coming, you know, whether it's rain or whatever, we still have some coming into here and it gets diverted and goes across the road to the uh, diversion tanks where the, it sits and that's where we, uh, we add limestone and that brings the pH up. The water coming out of here, the pH is very low. It's probably somewhere around four something. Things don't live in that pH. It's gotta be probably 4.5 or higher. It was probably around 2005. They put this in and then added added this tank, which you know has to be, uh, a person has to come out here and fill f buckets of uh, limestone and adds it to the tank. And that gets done on a regular basis. It's an odd Fritos smell down here. <laughs> Fritos, yeah, Fritos. So this is the tank after uh, that we were just talking about on the other side there. It drains into this larger tank and then that runs into this, uh, or I, no, I'm sorry, it come, this one just comes, it comes into this one. This one is sitting stagnant, I guess not, not being used right now. But this is the one that we add the limestone to and the water of course comes through that line there and overflows, runs down here with a higher pH than the water that's running past us. Uh, and now you can see down there, there's, we had just had a little bit of rain a few moments ago, so we actually have some runoff from different places. You can see, look, there's some clean water that is uh, running into this water. Uh, so it, there's, there's sources that it, it could actually run clean if we could just get, uh, get it to not run through a couple hundred or thousand feet of mine shaft, you know, I think we'd be winning. That's, that's kind of what we're working towards. This is actually the Buck Run, the beginning of Buck Run you're seeing. So Buck Run does, see what you can't see here is up a little further than this ditch. If you follow this ditch up this valley a little bit more, it's an actual stream. And that, this pipe coming across here wasn't the, you know, the creator of this, this there was always a stream that ran down through here. The problem is, that stream is dry because all the water is running into the ground into a mine shaft before it has a chance to get to this stream and, and fill it back up again. So this water we're seeing here could be from miles and miles away. Right. But it's actually coming out of the ground here. You know, if the seams were sealed up, then the water that come down would stay on top except for what's being absorbed by the trees and plants around it. And it would continue down on what we normally would be a bedrock, you know, and, and we don't have, we tore up everything that would be bedrock and uh, and connected you know all, all these mine shafts to each other, so it it makes it very difficult. And it's a big thing when we've talked to the other areas like Wilkesbury, that they they tell us that you know when we've looked at your area, it's it's like a, a cork board. You know, there's caverns and and, uh, and tunnels all different places that are connecting to each other, and no one put them on a map. And right. uh, you know when it rains, you get to see them. What you're looking at here is the site of the Big Mountain Mine Shaft. The shaft was opened in November of 1924, and it was sunk to a depth of 568 feet. So the water that you see surfacing here is traveling straight vertical over 550 feet up that mine shaft. And that's entirely due to the volume of water and the pressure that water is creating. Further down here, they have a, a weir that they... Uh, used when they first set it up, and they can use that to uh, to calculate the flow. It's a, basically a metal plate with a V cut out of it, and it sets in a place, but I can only imagine that V has some type of calibration that some tool must use to measure. Tell us where we are. Yeah, so this is Site 15. This is uh, along Route 901, uh, just outside of Cole Township and Ranshaw. And uh, we have a substantial amount of mine runoff here coming out. And they, they decided in 2005 that they were going to put this uh, passive treatment system in. And uh, it's been working, you know, for 20 years. It needs maintenance. 
uh, you know, besides cutting the grass and keeping the trees down and keeping the fence uh, standing, there's, uh, there's work that needs to be done. The, the, whole, the whole thing kind of just works. When they put it together, they put uh, material like mulch kind of in there and then they put the limestone in there and then they put mulch in there and then limestone in there. And, uh, you know, after a while, the limestone dissolves away. Uh, and then you're left with a bunch of mulch and, and the iron. So there's newer things they're, they're doing and, and we're looking into those. Uh, the expense is, is a factor we have to consider. One of the newest things is peroxide. It, it's working. The, the problem is it's a $5,000 a week uh, bill. So we got the first pond, water runs into this, uh, fresh out of the, the mine shaft, and it settles. Uh, goes through, again, limestone. When it gets to a certain level, it should take a certain amount of time before, when it, from the time it comes in this end, to go out that end, because that's how it's being treated in that, in that slow, slower state. But then once this overflows into the next one, of course, there's gonna be less sediment in it uh, that could possibly settle out. And then it goes into this one where again, it's being treated with uh, limestone to lower the, or to raise the pH. And then there's yet one more pond further down here that again, it just, this one, when it gets to a certain level, it drains into that and then that runs out the other side. And, and that runs back into the Shimokan Creek, uh, the Quaker Run, uh, section of the Shimokan Creek. At the end here, you can see the actual white buildup of uh, aluminum. When the pH is so low, it's acidic. That's what that means. It's really acidic. And that means any kind of metals get dissolved down to their smallest state. And when that happens, it would be like us breathing, you know, mercury. That isn't healthy. You can't, you know, so fish and, and creatures that live in water can't live with dissolved uh, metals in it. So, when we get the pH to raise, what happens is those metals start to find each other again and they bind back together and then that makes them heavier so then they begin to settle out. So it's that process that we're trying to create here. And again, at the end, naturally, it's, it's happening to the point where you can see there's a, a grayish waterfall that is formed and that's the, the aluminum that's binding again with itself. The newer systems also are a little smarter in that they kind of they're rationing how much water is going to each one based on the flow. That's some of the newer stuff they're doing. But again, it's just passive. We could be dropping 10,000 pounds of, uh, of limestone a month in the places that we would need to go. I, I think, you know, it would, it would keep two people busy all, all year long. So we have to stop the water from going into the mine shafts. That's, that's we're just going to keep on happening and happening and happening. So you ever looked at MSN weather, the maps? It has a LIDAR, but if you go over this area, you can find every single divot that from a foundation that's, that's in the ground here now, but mostly what I'm getting at is the veins that are dug in the ground. And I, I really struggle with when they say, well, we gotta, we kind of have to map it out and see where, where the, like, no, you just gotta make a bulldozer trail to it and drive a truck there and dump some stuff in it. <laughs> that seems like the simplest answer, but it's, you gotta get permission from everybody to get on that property. You can't be bulldozing stuff when there's, bats breeding or what you know whatever it might be there's all these little technicalities that got to get done but you need the funding and and people to care enough about it the water comes down from up by the votech um, that's its point of origin it's coming up out of the ground so up, straight up out of the mine pool and it flows down over the hillside and then in a pipe underneath Venn access roadway and it enters the first pond up at the top up here okay and then it makes its way down through overflow pipes. You can see the pipe across the way there. Yep. So it comes down through these series of ponds. And what that does is it slows down the water and it holds the water in these ponds for long enough that the sediment, the minerals, the iron can drop out so that it doesn't continue to be carried with the water oh, wow. down into Carbon Run. Okay. There's nothing happening here other than gravity. Um, okay. Once the water reaches the surface, it brings all those metals up to the surface with it. But if you can hold the water in some sort of holding pond for a period of time, all those metals naturally drop out. Oh, wow. Um, and the pH of the water raises. As the pH of the water raises, different metals will drop out. It's interesting, really, the chemistry of it, how different water pHs cause specific metals to drop out. 
That's interesting. Different metals drop out at yeah. different pH levels. Yeah. Wow. Um, so when you see the stream, if you look at the creek bed coming through, sh through Shemokin, or you look at any of these acid mine drainage streams, and you're seeing all of that orange, it's really not the water itself that's orange. It's all the sediment that has fallen out okay. and is coating the stream bed. Yeah. That's okay. the orange part. If you were to take a glass or a jar and you were to fill it with this water and hold it up to the light, it wouldn't look orange. Okay. It would look clear. So but everything on the orange, bottom of those ponds is, is just a sludge <clears throat> of that mineral residue. Right. Wow. Yep. For better or worse, there are some goldfish living in this pond. <laughs> <laughs> if you, I don't know, I don't know. They've been here for several years, so they seem to be thriving.